We were talking about strings in the last video, and in this one I want to carry on with a discussion of arrays. So you've worked with arrays in other languages, and a lot of the things you know about working with arrays are going to map nicely onto JavaScript arrays. However, there's a bunch of things that are quite different, so we'll try and look at how they're different and how you can wrap your head around some of these things. I also want to give you a tour of some of the really nice features that are built into objects, uh, arrays as objects. So when I say that an array is an object, it's like a string in the sense that we have a set of data and a set of operations, and we're going to bundle those together into an object. So when we work on arrays, we're going to have all kinds of functions that are attached to that data that we can, we can invoke in order to do things uh, with the array. Okay, so in JavaScript, arrays are dynamic, meaning that they can change size at runtime, they can get larger, they can, they can grow or shrink. You don't have to specify how many elements are in the array, so the JavaScript runtime will take care of increasing the memory allocation that's necessary to hold all of your, all of your items, which is really handy. So you can focus on the logic of working with the array, but you don't have to worry so much about I don't know, you know, managing all the memory and the space that goes with it. Uh, we don't have to define our types, so we don't define this is an array of numbers or this is an array of strings, or you can put anything you want into an array. You can put any number of elements. You can put any type of element. So there's a little bit of discipline that you need in order to do this so that you don't end up with a mess, but JavaScript will allow you to uh, put anything you want in your array. Like for example, there's a little bit of code in the notes right here. That's a valid array. Uh, you can put all different types of things into the array and JavaScript doesn't care. They're all just uh, elements that are indexed by position. So what we really have here with an array is we have a collection of items which are positionally accessible. So this is the zero with element, the first element, the second element, and so on. And we have the zero based array. Okay, so how do we create them? So we have a couple of ways to do it. Um, you can, because they are objects, you can define them as an object. So you can say, I want to have a new array and I want to put, these are the elements that I want to initially put into the array. Or you can use the more common array literal syntax. And this is the one that I will use most of the time. And what I would suggest that you get used to using when you're creating your code. So if I create an, if I wanted to create an, an array, uh, let array equals, and I have the empty array. Or if I wanted to say let array two is equal to an array with one, two, three in it, um, I have I have two arrays there and I can either put elements into it or not put elements into it, depending on how I want to use it. So it may seem odd to, to you to define an array that's empty when you're used to coming from a language where you have to define how many elements are in the array, what the type is and so on. Here we're just saying that we have, we have an array and we're going to work with this dynamically at runtime. So we can, we can add things and we can um, remove things from the array as we're going on. Okay, so what kinds of things can we do with this array? Well, um, some of the things that you're used to doing, so if I wanted to get the number two out of this array, so I can index into array two, and I can say, give me the element at position zero or one, and it will give back whatever that, whatever that element is. If you ask for a position that's not in there, so for example, 56, it doesn't give you an error. So what it'll do is it'll just give you back undefined. And there's lots of bugs in JavaScript programs where people aren't careful when they pull data out of arrays. If you ask for an index in an array, rather than having the program crash and or reading into memory that you're not supposed to be reading, it doesn't do any of that. It just hands you back nothing. So if you ask for something that isn't there, what you're gonna get back is you're gonna get back nothing. So be aware be aware of that when you're when you're working with these. So just like we, we could with a string, if we ask for the array's length, we're going to get the number of elements that are in there. And if we were working with this first array, this empty array, if I were to say I want the length of this, not surprisingly, that array is length zero. So when we were when we were talking about a string, 
we said that with a string, we could do things like ABC, give me the index of the letter B in this, and it tells me that that is at position one. If I have an array, one, two, three, four, sorry, four, and I say, give me the index of, um, let's say number three, it says number three is at position two, so zero, one, and two. So index of in an array and in a string work the same way. It gives you the position within the collection. So whether the collection is this collection of uh, characters in a string or in the case of an array, it's the elements that are in the array. We had, um, when we looked at strings, we also said ABC is a string and we said, does this, does ABC includes this search string? Uh, so if we said, does it include BC, for example, the answer is true. Does it include BCD? It does not. So we can search for a substring within, within that string. We can do the same thing with an array. So if I have one, two, three, and I say, does this include three? It does include three. So we have the same kinds of operations with index of and with includes and being able to um, to work with uh, to work with these. Now, when I have an array, so for example, um, if I say names is equal to web two two two, web three two two, and web four two two. So I have an uh, an array of names. So names is a reference to an object, and the object is this array. So if I were to say this, let courses equals names, what's that gonna do? Well, now what I'm gonna have is courses also refers to the same object, refers to the same object. What happens if I make a change to one of these? So what happens if I say that names, what is names at one? Names at one is web322. What if I change names at one? to something else. So what if I change it to web322 and I put an exclamation point in there like that. And I look at names and so here's my array, my, my names array has these elements and you can see that this element has changed. What will be at courses at position one? Well, it turns out it's the same thing because both of these variables, names and courses, they both refer to the same object. In other words, names is equal to courses. They both refer to the same object. So when you're working with arrays, we pass arrays around in JavaScript pro programs by reference. So if you're passing an array to a function or you're passing um, an array from one variable to another, what you're really passing, you're not making a copy of all of that data, you're passing a reference uh, like a pointer but a, a safe pointer, a pointer that you can't do arithmetic on and you, know, you can't add and go beyond the end of it and so on. So all we can do is we can follow that reference to the object that it refers to. Okay, so we can modify what's in our array. So earlier on we made an array and it was an empty array. So we have ARR is empty, ARR.length is equal to zero. And we said that this was kind of a funny thing to do because how do we, how do we put things inside this array? Like, what, what are we gonna do with it? Well, in JavaScript, it's possible for you to stick things in. So if I said ARR at zero is equal to one, and I look at ARR, you see that this array now has one element in it, has, has one in it, and the length of that array is now one. So we can actually put elements into an array. We can put into elements into an array after the array has been created. So we don't, we didn't have to specify how many elements were in there. We didn't have to specify a type. We can just start putting things into the array. So think of an array as a collection that can grow or shrink as you need it. And it holds all of the items that it holds positionally. So all of them are gonna be at some uh, particular index. So another thing we can do is we can say to the array that we would like to push new content in there. So for example, if I push the number two into my array and I look at the array, you can see that the array now has one and two. And if I were to push three into the array, 
you'll see that the array has one, two, and three. So what's happening here? Every time you push a new element into this array, what you're doing is you're going to put it at, put it at the end. So it's going to put it into the next position in the array at the end of the list. So every time if I put in four, my array is now gonna be one, two, three, and four. So I can use this to write code where I start out with an empty array and I push, 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 push all of these items in to build up an array. So this is a very common pattern that we use in JavaScript where we start out and we know we're gonna to wanna to have a list. We don't know how many items we wanna have in the list. All we know is that we're going to process some data and then we're slowly going to build up our list by pushing new items into the array. We can do the same sort of thing. So if I have an array that has four items in it, I can, I can remove the last item from the array and I can get it out. So I can almost like cut it out of the array if I, if I wanted to. So I could say, let, um, let's just say element. Element is equal to array.pop. So unlike push, I'm not gonna give a value. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the, so if I look at what element now contains the number four and what does the array contain? The array contains one less than it did before. It doesn't have the last element. The last element has been popped off of it. So this allows us to build what is essentially a stack, right? Where you're pushing things on to the end of the stack and you're popping things off. So you're able to, um, work with everything on the right-hand side of the array with push and pop. We have a similar thing we can do if I have an array, let's um, array. So if I was to, uh, if I wanted to put something at the front of the array, I can use another method, arr.unshift. So let's say I wanted to put zero at the front of that list, unshift. So my array now looks like this, zero, one, two, three. What if I wanted to put negative one at the front of that list? arr.unshift negative one. And now I have negative one, zero, and so on. If I wanted to remove those items from the list, arr.shift will remove the first element in the list and return it back to me. So there's negative one and you see that my list no longer has negative one. And if I do it again, I get zero and my list has reduced again. So when I do a push, it's gonna put it onto the end of the list on the right-hand side. If I do an unshift, it's going to put it on the left-hand side at the front. So you can see that my array can grow dynamically. And what's nice about working with an empty list and adding to it is that I can slowly build up a list at runtime, which has all of the elements that I, I need and I can, I can do work on those elements. Okay. So let's talk about, let me switch over to my editor here. Let's talk about working with arrays and doing iteration. So I wanna spend a little bit of time talking to you about the code that's uh, in the notes here, um, talking about different ways of looping over an array. So let's, let's start out and make an array. So let's have an array um, and let's just stick with numbers for the moment, like that. So what if I wanted to I wanted to print all of those numbers out to the console, one, two, three, four, five. How would I do that? So what I can do is I can use a for loop, just like you would use if you were working in C or C++. I could say that I want to have a for loop. I'm gonna let i equals zero. i is going to be less than the length of the array, so array.length. And I'm going to increase i and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to console.log my array at position i. And if we wanted to, we could also print out what i is. So I'll do I'll print out two numbers, i and array at i. And if we were to run this, we get the following output. 
So the index and, and the numbers. So this, this kind of code is really common in JavaScript. You'll see it all the time. People, um, people write code like this. What if we wanted to modify this slightly? What if I wanted to put the numbers one to a hundred into an array? So I want to go from one to, or from zero to a hundred. And I want to add an element to the array. So how do I add to an array? I can push into the array, array.push, and I could push in the value of i plus one. So go one, two, three, four, five, so on. And at the end, we could console.log the array to see what's in it. So let's see what this does. So here I have my numbers from one to 100. It's printed them out for me like so. So I've been able to use the dynamic aspect of JavaScript to populate my array. So I start out with the empty array and I push, I push items into the array and build this up. And we could obviously go bigger if I said I want this to be a thousand. Um, we have a thousand items in the array and my console is only printing out the first hundred or so. And then it says, you know, there are 900 more items. All of them are there, but uh, we're not printing all of them there. How would we modify it to print them all? So if we did another loop uh, for let i equals zero, i is less than console.log i and array at i like this. And we close this and we run. And you can see that we have all of our items printing out to the console like so. Okay, so another thing we can do is let's make a different kind of array. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, like so. So I can loop across all of these. So for let i equals zero, i is less than the length of the array, i plus plus, and I could say let word is equal to, um, let's rename this, let's call this words. And let's say that word is equal to words at i, console.log word. So if we were to run this program, whoops, we get our, our program prints out all of the words like so. Okay, so let's rewrite this slightly differently. So this kind of loop works and you'll see it all the time in lots of different programs, but there are other options available to us in JavaScript, other syntax that we can use. And I wanna show them all to you. And with the understanding that you're not necessarily going to automatically feel comfortable with all of these different styles. So it's okay if you look at some of these and you say, you know what, I don't get this or um, I don't understand this yet. The operative word there is yet. I want you to see it and then slowly we'll make use of it and you'll see other programmers using it and um, you'll have some different options available to you. So one of the problems with code like this is that it's really easy when you're writing a for loop for you to have a certain category of error which is the dreaded off by one. So you, you have too few or too many uh, iterations and you go off the end of the array or you miss something in the array or you start at the wrong port part of the array. Those kinds of things are a problem. So another way that we could write this is we could use what's called a for of loop. So I could say for let word of words. And this is basically the same thing as what we just wrote up here. So it's saying, I want to create um, a variable word and I want word to be the first element in words. And on the second time through, it's gonna be the second element, the third element, the fourth element. And we will console.log word like that. 
So I'll save that and we run this and you can see that the program does the same thing twice. So in both cases, it has printed out our code. This version one uses a for loop. Version two uses a for of loop. The for of loop is kind of nice because it lets you write code that doesn't have to worry about indexing. You don't have to define a variable with an index and you don't have to get the element out of the array and index it that way. You're just defining a variable and then the loop is going to automatically take care of iterating or enumerating across that list of elements and giving you a reference to the current word, whatever it is, as you go across. Notice that word doesn't have a type. So if we were working, would this work? Like what if words, what if words looked like this? One, two, three, four, five, would that work? So if we run this, yeah, that works too. There's no problem. We can do it this way too. So there's nothing specific about the type of this word. This just says, give me a variable and I wanna map that variable onto the first, second, third as we go through. So this is a loop that's gonna go over these one by one by one. Here's a third version. So one of the really interesting parts of working with arrays in JavaScript is that they come with a whole bunch of methods that you can call. And I've linked to all of the array methods in the notes. If you will go through a lot of them and you can read about uh, lots of different ones as we go. But I wanted to show you a few examples of things you can do here with uh, iterating across these. So the next one I'm gonna do is not going to use a loop at all. It's going to use a function and I'm going to use two functions in fact to write it. So let me write the code and then let's talk about what it's doing. So bear in mind that the code I'm about to write is exactly the same as both of these but it looks quite different. So I'm gonna take words and I'm gonna call a method for each. And the first argument to for each is a function. Let's run this first of all and see that it does in fact print out the same thing three times. So what's going on here? Okay, so in the first case, I'm writing a for loop. The for loop is concerned with an index like index zero and so on and lengths and it's reaching into the words array and getting an element and it's working with it that way. The second version of this is defining a variable and then it's letting the, it, the loop itself is taking care of figuring out how many times should I run how do I get the current element and put it into this variable? And then I can just work with this variable here. The third version of this is taking the words array and using it as an object. Now this is gonna feel odd at the beginning because we're used to thinking of an array as kind of a low level thing. So, you know, we have arrays in C or other places. And so you think of this just as like a built-in thing that has elements in it that are positional. But actually in JavaScript, this is an object and it has methods. And one of the methods that it has is for each. So the for each method says, take this function right here and call this function for each of the elements inside of this array. So what it's doing is it's gonna call this function on the string one. It's gonna call this function on the string two, on the string three, four, and five but you don't see any of that happening. Like you don't see the loop here. You just see a function call, take words, and for each one of the things inside there, call this function. Um, and I am passing, I'm, I'm, I'm going to define a variable, but I am not calling this function. The for each function is gonna call it, and it's gonna pass me this variable. It's gonna pass me the current value of one or whatever. Now that's the same thing that I did here, only I had to do it manually. Down here, I'm not having to do it manually. The, the system is doing it for me. 
So JavaScript has all of these neat functions for being able to work with the values that are stored inside of an array. So let me show you another one. So here, what do I do? I define a new variable, uppercase words. And I say that uppercase words is equal to the return value of this expression here. So what are we doing? I'm saying take the words array and call the map function. The map function takes a function. It's passed to the current word, so the word one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a new version of that word. I'm going to modify it and return the word in uppercase. So then I'm going to call the second one and turn it into uppercase and so on. So let me show you what this would look like. Um, let me save my code first. So you can see that what it's doing here is it is creating a new array. So uppercase words is a new array and uppercase words is equal to taking these words and I am mapping this function onto this list. So let me show you another example over here. If I had one, two, three, four, five, and I wanted to multiply all of those numbers by two, let's say. So I wanna take this list, I wanna make a new list and I want to modify it somehow. So I'm going to map function number, and I'm going to return number times two. And I get back a new array, which has the same number of elements, same number of elements, but each one of those elements has been multiplied by two. And I, but my original array is unchanged. So if, for example, if I have um, let numbers is equal to one, and I say numbers.map function number, you can see that numbers, my original array, still has the same set of values. So these special uh, methods that live on, on the array type, things like for each and map, and um, let me show you a filter quickly. Um, well, take a look at this list here. What if I said to you, um, I want to get all of the words that have more than three letters in the word. So go through a list of words and give me a new list that has um, only the words that are three letters or more. All right, so how could I do that? I could say um, let three or more is equal to words.filter so what I want you to notice about these all these methods that I'm writing here, for each and map and filter, they all work the same way. You give them a function, and that function is going to receive an element, the first element, the second element, the third element, and so on. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say, if the word has more than three letters. So how do I tell how long a word is? Well, I can get its length. If the word's length is greater or equal to, let's say greater than three, uh, if it's greater than three, I need to change the name of this. Uh, so this would be four or more. If it's greater than three, then I want to return true. Otherwise, I'll return 
false. And this code could be simplified because this, I could just return the value of this. I could just say return whether or not the words length is greater than three and I don't have to do all of the if and else. So if I did this and I console.log uh, for or more, let's see what it does. You can see that it's given me a new array, but instead of having one, two, three, four, five elements in it, this array only has three elements in it. And all of the elements are words whose length is greater than three. Um, you know, you can do this with any type of thing. So if I had one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, and, and I said, filter this list. Here's a function that I want you to use to filter this list. And I'm going to return true if you are supposed to include this element and false if you're not supposed to include this element. So the filter function decides whether or not these other elements are meant to be included in the new list. So we could say return number is uh, greater than, I don't know, say greater than five. And in our list, there's only two, two of them, or we could say, give me all of the numbers that are less than one. And we get back a different set. So being able to work with our arrays as a collection of things is a, it's a really powerful idea. I can, um, I can transform that list into a new list of things. I can work with it in order to filter it and say, I wanna, I wanna reduce the number of things in, that are in here to a smaller list. Um, and we're gonna, in, in subsequent assignments and so on, we'll play with these, but I want you to read about them and just sort of become used to them. And the thing that I would say is that when you are starting out, just go back to the code here, this is probably gonna be where you're gonna wanna begin you're gonna begin with these for loops, just like you would write in C. And if that's comfortable, you can stay there for a while. This style of loop, the advantage of a for of loop is that it's gonna get rid of all of the possible bugs you could have with off by one errors. You don't have off by one errors here because you're just iterating across the entire collection of elements that are in there. And then the third phase is migrating to these functions. So functions that take functions and do things to the array. So they iterate over them, they transform them, they look for things, they filter. There's all these different versions of it that are really, really powerful when you're trying to slice and dice an array and figure out how to, um, how to work with the items that are in there. So one other thing that we, we should talk about while we're here is how to go back and forth from strings to arrays. So when I was talking about strings in the previous video, I skipped this because we were just about to talk about arrays. But if I have a string, um, for example, if I have a string that looks like this, uh, let me redo this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So if I have something that looks like this, I can use the strings split method to turn that into an array. So whenever I have a string, if I want to split it, all I have to do is give a separator. So in this case, I'm using uh, the comma. So give me, take this and split it up. And now I have an array of strings instead of an array of, uh, or just one string. And so if I were to say, um, let nums equals this, nums is now an array with 10 elements in it. Those are all strings. Arrays can go the other way. So arrays can say, if you say nums.join and give a separator, you can take an array and you can turn it back into a string. And you can say, I want to join together all of the elements 
um, all of the elements that are in my array and I want to use a particular separator, or you could say I want to use a space or something like that, and give me a string that puts those things back together. So this, this is a very common thing, um, common thing that we'll do where we want to go between strings and arrays and back again when we're trying to transform data. Sometimes it's easier to work with things as a string. Sometimes it's easier to work with them as a list and to be able to dynamically add and remove and uh, work with the elements that are, are in, inside of an array. So I think I will, I'll pause this here and uh, I wanna do one more talking about regular expressions and then I wanna try and use all of these things. So I think it's hard to understand the syntax. Like it's hard for me to just say, okay, this does this, this does this, and you just memorize it. Nobody can do that. So what I think we need to do instead is we should try and write a program together and make use of these things and just talk about why would we choose to use uh, one piece or another over. All right, so we'll, we'll come back with regular expressions next.